All right, so we're back on the Subaru, and what we're doing today is we're trying to figure out some of this janky wiring. All right, so somebody at some point thought it would be a good idea, and if I was in an emergency situation on the side of the road, I have done some janky stuff to make things work, but this was their permanent solution. See, that butt connector wasn't even crimped down good on the wire, but they had... It lasted for some time, apparently. Well, this is a this is a fire hazard, bro. Oh, it's an absolute fire hazard. So, I mean, no doubt. This is. I mean, we're getting levels here to pocket money. So we're in the process of me trying to figure out what is even going on. What is go? What is going on here? We're trying to figure out the deal with this wiring. So. First thing we gotta do is take all this janky crap off and you know, I'm not gonna totally dismember remember it because you know, I wanna try to figure out what they did and get into their thought process. You got any side cutters there, kiddo? Or do I just need to take my pocket knife? I just use my pocket knife. So far away. So, not sure exactly where we left off, but we were talking about the wiring for this fan, and we're trying to figure out the factory way that it was wired. Uh, you have a blue with a black, a blue and a black, not a blue with a black, a blue and a black with a connector here. And then when you come over here in the harness, you have a black and a blue with a connector. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell if I no, I am mistaken. They don't match. They don't match. They're the same kind of connector. So I wonder if maybe there's a possible jumper between these two. We're trying to figure out what the blue. Where are we at? You get it? Mm -hmm. We're trying to figure out what this is in the harness that's got the same coordinating colors as what goes to the fan and see if we can figure out if that is the fan wiring that it should be controlled and come on and off when the air conditioner runs. So let's dig in here and we're going to see what we can find and we'll be right back. We're still trying to figure out what they did and why. Where's that Chilton's manual? We got a Chilton's manual and got one of these, don't waste your time on the filters, man. This thing right here. Garden. Bad. It's not, it just doesn't give you very much information. Normally Chilton's does good, but on this it's been pretty pitiful. Uh, and we're digging through all of the 12,000 butt connected. They did at least install fuses, but we've removed a bunch of wire. And we've got some more digging to do, so we're gonna have to do some research and try to come back and figure out how to make these electric fans work and how to make this uh, compressor work with the dash controls. So, we're gonna get to doing that. So, we were excited to drive it, but that's not gonna be possible. But I have this gas tank and you can't really see, but there's a fuel line hanging out of it. And it goes directly to the fuel pump. So we're going to see if this dude runs off the fuel pump. Stay tuned to find out. All right. Just want to go with all we've discovered tonight. A lot of good things. The entire fuel and carb system works. The choke. All that. I've adjusted the idle a little bit. Now that it's hot, it's idling great. Um, no more real stumble at idle either on the throttle transition. Uh, got some kind of noise coming either from the water pump or the alternator. I'm leaning towards the water pump, but I'll have to pull the belt off and figure it out. Uh, the fan kicks off and on on its own exactly like it should. Um, that's doing great and it's holding temp. It's been running for probably almost an hour or so. Smooth. Most of the rattling you hear is in the exhaust. Yeah, let me see if we can get that to quit, but the uh, engine does not make those noises. But yeah, that's what we're working with. We did have to jump the 
fuel pump controller, but um, you know, hey, we're working through it. We've got it running, and this is the first time I've been able to get it to run on its own fuel system and stay running for a prolonged period of time. So that is a victory. Horn works. Got the belt off. The only thing I needed. That. Pretty sure what we got making noise is the cars going by on the street. This alternator. It's not very loud, but you can hear it. Here is we can this down here. Pretty nice. Better nice. Our culprit. This carpet is looking absolutely spectacular. Looking very fresh in the back of this bed. All right, we're going to do the best we can to get you a look down in there. And you can see she looks a lot different. You can see the a little bit of damage on the inside of the tank, but there it goes. All that crusty rust is gone. All right, the time has come. The gas tank is in the car. We got it back from Watkins Radiator this morning and I picked it up after work. Um, so let me just show you guys the deal. Um, so this line's gonna need some clamps and the lines down here, there's some uh, vapor lines. They're gonna need some clamps as well, but those are just vapor lines. And so for testing purposes, they're gonna be okay. Uh, we're gonna go do a test drive, hopefully. And uh, yeah, everything that has raw fuel has good clamps and you can see all that right here so we shouldn't have any leaks we're going to check all that before we go everything's hooked back up tanks back in and we're going to give it a shot let's put some gas in this thing everything looks pretty good i don't see any fresh drips or anything we're going to hook the juice up and see what happens all right i'm going to let you guys walk through this with me very simple from here on out. We're just gonna hook up the power, battery power and see if it cranks up like a normal car. <clears throat> All right. I should start her up. Fuel pump's working. All right. Surely five gallons is enough gas, huh? All right, let's go out here under the hood and see if we got fuel pressure.
All right, so we're looking at about a week later. Um, we got the tank in, he installed the tank, and... Yeah, I installed the tank, and after installing the tank, I discovered that a couple of the lines, actually pretty much every line except for the vapor lines were plugged. And so I spent probably three or four days trying to unplug them with various methods, at which point I was unsuccessful and had him call the shop back. And now they have the tank, and hopefully they're going to be able to heat it and remove the blockage. Yeah. Hopefully. There's some kind of blockage. But in that, also in that time, what else did you do to the car? Uh, because of that, I kind of started doing some of the other stuff. I ordered some parts, and I've started going through the, the freshening up of the engine and some of the other aspects. I, I, one of the first things I did was put oil in it and uh, filter and... Other than that, I haven't done a lot to it. You did the plugs. I did the plugs and wires. Plugs and yes. wires. Did plugs and wires. And fuel. You did replace fuel lines up here around the engine. Yeah. You told Some me hard that. lines, uh, <sighs> vacuum leaks, things like that. Just addressed any of those kind of small issues. So today we wanted to try to be able to check out the drivetrain. We were hoping to have this fuel system in so we could go drive it. Yeah, we're already a week behind schedule on that. Uh, old car problems. But anyway, we have rigged up a temporary fuel system. I don't know that it is so fully adequate to do exact, you know, to be able to go drive it like we want to well, drive we're it. We're not going to be able to drive it with all the beans. No, you, it, the, the boat tank that I had uh, in the earlier videos that I had it on is a little bitty fuel line. It is designed for an outboard motor and it is not supplying enough fuel. We think it's running out of fuel if you try to give it too much fuel. So. Anyway, we're fixing to go do that. We're going to go take it around the uh, short block, close enough distance that we have to push it home we can. So that's what we're doing. So let's go do let's that. Let's go for a ride. We are ready. We are in two-wheel drive. Moving forward. Not sure how it's going to, how it's going to run. Where is this? Let's pick up. We'll see. He's up here where we can see what's coming. I can't. bouncy we just need to adjust the idle up I had it down but I may have gone too down it may have gone too far that may be all that's wrong with it the idle get it all right Stayed running even with the brake booster. Running very nice. I'm gonna put it in four wheel drive and we'll make this turn here. Yeah, we're gonna go adjust the idle. I'm gonna try it again. Is that four wheel drive? Yep. Do they have an indicator on? Yeah. It does have an indicator. Mm -hmm. All right, so there we go. We got to row it through the gears. We got to kind of listen to the drivetrain. Don't hear anything crazy going on. Uh, we're probably going to, off camera, we're going to go take a little bit longer test drive maybe. Um, and just to see how it does. Uh, try to get a little more speed out of it. Just to kind of get a feel for the car. But when we come back, what I'm planning to be working on is we're going to try to address the rust. It is on the driver door. All right, so we're gonna get in here. We're gonna take a look at this rust. We got a little better light so I can show you and we've got the gasket off so we can show you exactly 
just how bad it is. This is the worst rust on the entire vehicle and we're going to get it taken care of um, as best as possible without uh, a full restoration, which we're not going to do. All right, so in all its rusted glory, there we go. There's a nice little spot right there and there's some other places down along the bottom edge it just needs some treatment no big holes biggest holes right here and i feel like that i'm going to be able to use a method with the pour 15 and the fiberglass and be able to seal this up and uh be able to have it where we can have a line to be able to run the gasket along the gasket runs right along here so most of that is still intact and this would be considered to the exterior of the car and this would from from here up would be the interior of the car so anyway we got to get to work i got a vacuum cleaner wire brushes scraping tools you name it we got it we're fixing to get after it All right, so I spent about the last two hours cleaning, prepping, pour 15ing, pour patching, and fiberglassing on the bottoms of these doors. Come on in, you can take a look. We had to build this contour right here because there was no metal there. Uh, we used fiberglass and the pour 15. It's a method I've used before. Um, this is just the first run at it. We are not done by any stretch of the imagination. I also know that this is not the way to restore a door like this but what we're trying to do is keep this thing all original if you go to start welding on this thing you understand the a chance that it's the heat's going to go through it's going to damage the paint on the outside and the paint on the bottom of this thing is, is pretty nice and the patina which we want to keep it like it is we're trying to not disturb that but like i said this is the first run at it we've got some more a little more work to do to it um we're actually going to try to find I not try to find, I have a, there's a company, Napa, everybody knows Napa, but they actually custom mix paint by paint code and you can get it in an aerosol can. So I'm going to be looking at doing that and we'll be able to touch up the paint on the bottom of this door. We did the passenger door. It's not quite as bad as this door was, um, but we've got the 415 pour patch on it. And now we're just waiting for it to cure. So while we're waiting for that to cure, why don't you go out and watch another video coming on the screen right now? Mm -hmm.